I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for a moment. Here. 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 This time, what brings item number four on the agenda was consideration of the minutes of the regular scheduled committee and hold meeting, which was held on January 9th, 2023, and also the minutes of the regular scheduled city council meeting, also held on January 9th, 2023. We report motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Motion made by Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman. Is that Daltridge? Is that Walker? Councilman Walker. Any need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. All opposed, like sign. Minutes are now approved. This time I'd like to add, um, see if there are any additions or, or consideration of additions or deductions from the agenda. I have a request that we want to close session for personnel and economic development matter. Uh, are there any other items either to be added or to remove? Be removed. Hearing none, any motion to uh, approve the, uh, 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 the agenda, the new agenda? So moved. Second. Motion made by Councilman uh, Lodge Daltridge and seconded by Councilman Tavares Walker. Is there a need for discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, all opposed, like sign. 
That brings us to item number six on the agenda, which is the update from our city manager, Keith Rogers. I'll turn it over to you, Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Uh, coming up, the city of Rocky Mount has several events taking place. Uh, as you all are aware, Community Development and Fair Housing Month draws to a close. So the city will be hosting a homelessness roundtable from 10 to 11 a.m. on Tuesday at the Environmental Services Complex on 1221 Thorpe Road. And a representative from the North Carolina Coalition to End Homelessness will be there to facilitate a discussion with all of our local agencies and the community regarding homelessness in our area. Also this week, we have a Ward 3 community meeting. Councilman Jorner will host this meeting from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. this Thursday at Victory in Christ Ministry on 1200 Old Wilson Road. Also on Friday, the city's annual Arbor Day celebration will take place at 10 a.m. at our Rocky Mountain Historic Tree Park at 962 Bethlehem Road. And then finally, the first Friday event will kick off downtown on May the 5th. So we will have various businesses that will be taking part and there will be live music, games, and for additional details, please visit our uh, downtown website, which is downtownrockymount.com. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Do you have any comments or questions for me? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to presentation and recognitions. A proclamation from the City of Rocky Mountain. Whereas public works is an honorable profession involving a variety of challenging and rewarding careers essential to efficient and effective operation of government. Whereas the efficiency of the dedicated and skilled personnel staffing the public works and water resources department is influenced by their attitude and understanding of the importance of the work they perform. Whereas these men and women contribute considerably to the quality of life of the citizens they serve, their commitment to the excellence and variety of skills are in invaluable resource for providing the various services expected, to, expected by our citizens. And whereas the public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to sustain communities and to the health, safety, and well-being of the people of the city of Rocky Mount to help out our communities grow and prosper. Whereas these public works facilities and services could not be provided to the community without the dedicated efforts and unwavering committed commitment of the public works and water resources professionals responsible for planning, designing, building, operating, maintaining, and managing the transportation network, the storm water system, the water supply, the water and wastewater treatment plans, the water and wastewater distribution and collection systems, maintenance of the city's motor vehicle and equipment fleet, and the delivery of solid waste services, which are essential services to, the citizen, to our citizens. Whereas the public works this public works week strives to inform all citizens about the quality of people in government who work tirelessly every day to strengthen the bond that keeps us all connected. Their commitment to high ethical standards and the value of the services they perform, to encourage excellence among public employees, and to promote interest in civil service concern careers. And whereas this year's theme, Connecting the World Through Public Works, speaks to the essential nature of public work services in support of everyday quality of life. Now, therefore, I, as the mayor of the city of Rocky Mountain, do I proclaim the week of May 21 and 27th of 2023 as Public Works Week in the city of Rocky Mountain. Mr. Kerr.
time, we receive public petitions. The public petition portion of the City Council meeting is an opportunity for public comment. And the City Group Council appreciates your attendance and thanks you for expressing your views and opinions. City Council values all citizen input, and this is an opportunity to raise a question or present a request to the Council. However, in most cases, Council members will not respond in public comments, but may refer a matter to the City Manager or staff to follow up. Time will be monitored or to give everyone an opportunity to speak, and speakers will have 30 minutes. Please be aware that sign-in sheets must be presented to the Security Officer prior to the opening of the City Council meeting. And if the organized group is present to speak on a common issue, please designate one person to present the group's comments. For comments in regard to an item that is the subject of a public hearing, please wait until that item is introduced to speak. Time will also be monitored. For comments in regard to an evidentiary hearing, additional time may be granted. And the City Council requests that you please adhere to the following guidelines. Complete sign-in sheet. Address comments to the Council as a whole and not to individual Council members or City staff. Speak from the podium in a civil, non-argumentative, and respectful manner. And personal attacks which have the potential to disrupt the meeting will not be tolerated if you be asked to sit down or remove from the meeting. And keep my comments to three minutes. This time I'd like to invite Mr. Wayne, uh, Mr. Michael Wayne to the podium. Good afternoon, Mayor Robertson, City Councilman, City Manager Rogers. My name is Michael Wayne. I'm a fire captain with our internationally accredited Class 1 rated fire department. <clears throat> I'm here today to speak on behalf of our members of the department regarding the current state of our salary and benefits. Uh, first, let me make it clear that we fully support our brothers and sisters in blue at the police department and the recent 36% increase in starting salary. They work hard daily and put their lives on line to protect the citizens of Rocky Mountain. But so do we. We, the fire department, respond to the same dangerous shootings and stabbings calls that police department does. Just in the last calendar year, we have responded to 63 shootings alongside our police uh, counterparts. For as long as any of us can remember, there has always been a gap in salary and benefits between police and fire. Additionally, our fire department's starting salary is no longer uh, competitive with surrounding departments, many of which are smaller and than ours and are not accredited or have a class one rating. In the past three and a half years, our department has lost 20 employees to those departments. They are paying more and have better benefits. These are not just brand new employees. They were veterans employees, eight to 10 years of experience that left us take entry-level positions at other departments, making more than we do currently. Last week's bold move announcing starting pay for new police officers of the would-be $60,000 was great for those officers and will surely help with the recruitment efforts to fill vacancies. It would equally help us in the same efforts. Currently, 72% of our fire department makes less than $60,000. 72%. Speaking for myself, I've been with the fire department for 18 years, and I've been a supervisor for several of those years. It wasn't until this last pay per performance raise that I, myself, went over $60,000. And much like uh, veteran members of our police force, we too suffer from compensation when salary ranges are adjusted to attract entry-level positions. Those compensation issues have been responsible for many of those 20 employees leaving in the past three and a half years. And our brothers in blue aren't the only ones operating with several vacant positions. Those 20 people who left us for higher pay created vacancies for us as well. But let me tell you about your fire department and how we adapt to situations such as that to ensure that we continue our mission, which is to protect lives and property through quality and excellence and service. Our department provided complete coverage and led the city's emergency management efforts during the COVID pandemic, all while having 15 vacancies. We have never stopped running calls, and we never closed the fire station or took a fire truck out of service. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. I appreciate everybody's enthusiasm, but let's uh, let's try to get through this if you don't mind. I'd like to invite Jeremy Wells to the podium. Good 
afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Jeremy Wells, and I also have a fire captain for Rocky Mountain Fire Department. I would like to reiterate that last week's announcement about increasing the starting pay for Rocky Mountain Police Department and adjusting all PD employees accordingly, accordingly was great news, and we are happy their efforts will be rewarded. I would also like to reiterate what Captain Wayne said in that I, too, have been with Rocky Mountain Fire Department for a long time. And as a supervisor, I make up just a little over the $60,000 that those entry-level police officers will be now be making. Captain Wing did an excellent job outlining some of the some of the issues that our department has faced. Yet we continue, yet we continue to provide top-notch fire and emergency services to our citizens. I'd like to share with you some of the things that your fire department does <clears throat> that many of you probably do not know. Rocky Mountain Fire Department consistently leads the city's United Way efforts, contributing 25% of the city's overall campaign. For the past two years, that has been over $23,000 each year. Rocky Mountain Fire Department consistently leads the Christmas aid efforts. Last year, we had 100% of our employees contributed in this initiative to, other, to help other city employees in their time of need. Over the past five years, our department has totaled over, over $9,400 towards that campaign. Our department consistently has 100% participation by all of our employees by the city's Keep America Beautiful campaign every year. So, even though we have never been paid for this, have this, and never have been paid or have the same benefits as our counterparts at the police department, we have continued to support the city and do things that are not in our core job responsibilities. We have found and implemented numerous cost saving and staff measures that have ensured our citizens provide protection of lives and property through quality and excellence in service, all with no compensation, no additional compensation. Many of us are now faced with big decisions of whether to seek employment elsewhere where we would be fairly compensated for our levels of training and expertise. We all came to Rocky Mountain Fire Department with our, with, we, we all came to Rocky Mountain Fire Department thinking that we would first serve our full fire service career here and retire from here. But these recent gaps in salary and benefits have us all questioning if that is a wise choice. Those of you sitting at the table up here in front of me, you already know that, you are already aware that all of us have received full-time retirement at 25 years while we work 30. Additionally, they receive separation pay, which is a huge monetary benefit granted to them by the state legislation, but that the city puts the bill. Captain Wayne and I came here today on behalf of all men and women of the Rocky Mountain Fire Department to bring the things that we mentioned in attention to your parent to you, and we ask that your parity parity in pay and benefits for our police department counterparts. Lastly, I would like to say I would like to ask that all of you in this room today that are in support of the fire department, please stand up. Thank you for your time and thank you for allowing us to talk on this subject today. Thank you. I'd like to invite Dr. Koo to the podium. Good evening. My name is Dr. Koo. Rocky Mount is a microcosm of the larger United States. Whatever is happening out there is reflected here. I'll give you three examples. Number one, there's a death of democracy. We hear about deals that significantly impact us, are made behind closed doors and without discussion or our consent, like the proposed $20 million judicial center. Are we supposed to accept this after the fact? Reflected within the federal government is the same, the unrelenting drive to a global war without our consent. Most of us prefer to have our tax dollars spent to build infrastructure, fund public education, enable Medicare for all, help our cities build affordable housing, provide gainful employment, and stop hunger. No public consent was obtained for the constant warfare, cold, hot, hybrid sanctions or blockades. I was never asked to vote on this. And instead of being more concerned with rising poverty, the mayor's prioritization of public security will usher in greater repression. Raising the wages of police officers without concomitant increase in pay for all public employees gave the police an extraordinary privilege above others. The death of democracy and the rise of fascism are two sides of the same coin. Number two, there's an alarming trend of shutting out dissenting voices and other opinions by the media. Corporate media censorship is now at its highest with the silencing of Julian Assange and Seymour Hirsch. In the same way, our local papers is very selective in what it wants to publish. It suppresses certain voices while amplifying others. To be present at the city council meetings and read about it in the papers the very next day, I am astonished at the differences it choose, what it chooses to exclude or include. 
not to mention a whole bunch of misinformation and half-truths seen in the country's media. Number three, if, there have been a, if you have been following global events, you might be struck by how much African voices have risen up against the United States, constant lecturing to them, to, to them. Africans are standing up and will not tolerate being spoken down to. In the same way, at the last council session, I was outraged when a white woman had the temerity to lecture us on how to behave. Who gave her that right? And I do not need the mayor to apologize for me. Why don't you stand up for the rights of George Floyd or the, or the ouster of the legitimately elected officials in Tennessee or the four people of the African People's Socialist Party who were arrested in St. Petersburg, Florida for speaking up against the war? This hypocrisy is mind-boggling and the same hypocrisy of the State Department is being exposed on a daily basis in the international arena. Americans should be more humble and spend less time telling others how to behave and more time correcting the disasters devastating our country. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Susan Perry Cole to the podium. <coughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Susan Perry Cole. First, I came today to again voice opposition on behalf of some Rocky Mountain taxpayers to the city's possible investment in replacement of the Judicial Center building at an estimated cost of $30 million. I have already mentioned in prior remarks before the City Council that deteriorating U.S. economic outlook is a major reason for lack of taxpayer support for the city possibly financing the Judicial Center replacement. Today I want to emphasize that a rush to approve city financing of the Judicial Center replacement coupled with runaway inflation can only serve to widen the gap between the city's strategies to expand affordable housing opportunities and resources available to carry them out. Secondly, I want to express concern about a recent decision to increase the starting salary of Rocky Mountain police officers to $60,000. How can existing employees from other city departments maintain confidence that they are being paid a fair and reasonable wage when the 36% increase in higher salaries was granted only to police department personnel. Finally, I'm also disturbed by recent news reports indicating that the mayor intends to increase his enforcement of the rules of decorum against members of the city council who may have, or some may have viewed that as disruptive or out of order. Reprimanding elected officials who dare to forcefully speak out and give voice to views of some marginalized city residents who for too long have been silenced is un undemocratic and unprecedented. Thank you for the opportunity to share these comments today. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Joanne Jones to the party. Good evening, Mayor Robinson, Robinson, to the new city manager, I haven't met him yet, to all our councilmen, to Chief Harold, Chief Police, to all the other officers of the fire department, residents, staffs, everybody in the city of Rocky Mountain, as well as residents. I'm Joanne Gentry Jones. I reside at 601 Atlantic Avenue, and I'm going to read to you what my request is. Again, good evening. I like to address vacant and abandoned lots, residential lots, in the city of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. These lots are abandoned simply because these are particular of foreclosure laws that are in existence and are currently being enforced. You can buy it, they can sell it, some of this air property. So the property remains dilapidated and abandoned and rough and rugged and it causes crime to continue in errors as such. In particular, on the corner of Grand Avenue and Atlantic Avenue, right in front of, right beside, right before my property, 601 Atlantic Avenue, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, 27801. The number one factually, 
the number one increase in generational wealth is land ownership. Ownership. It goes on and on and on. You all can, can attest to that. You can attest to that. On and on and on. Land will outlive everybody in this room today. So, if you want to have something in life, have pride, take pride in it, buy property. I've been unfortunately unable to do that because the Edgecombe County said to me when I talked to the tax assessor's office that they can't sell me that land with the vacant that is vacant because the property is that is owned about herbs. The back taxes on that property is just a thousand and some dollars when I last checked. I want it. And I want it because I see cars come in and out. Six or two hundred people come through that intersection while I keep my property clean there and live reasonably and peacefully among my neighbors and my constituents in the city. I see them come in and create drive throughs and I see drug deals because it's, un it's unmanned. It's, it's, un it's not maintained. And it breeds, it breeds pest. It breeds failure. We live three blocks from a wild, luxurious, beautiful event center. And 20 years ago, the year of you all and us to see the Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, the net income of $50 million. Surely, can somebody talk to Edgecombe County and tell them that loose these laws, create a law, create an ordinance, create something where residents, I'm not sure, residents or everybody else can Thank come and purchase. Thank you for listening. I'd like to invite Adrian Copeland to the podium. So I wanted to talk about crime in the city and specifically the reporting of the crimes. Um, so back on March 26, there was an article on the Telegram that said five injured and three shootings in the city, and that was supposedly crimes that well, it was crimes that occurred on March 25th. But in that same article, it talked about the previous weekend of March 18th. There was also it said half a dozen people were arrested on misdemeanor charges after a ruckus there the previous weekend. The Telegram found out about that disturbance from outside of law enforcement circles. Okay, that is alarming. Um, so if we don't know what's going on with crime in our city, then how can we fix it? How can we properly address the problem? Uh, I know I get up in the mornings on the weekend and I check the paper and I check online and try to see what happened, check the news. And uh, I know particularly on the 18th, I did and I didn't see anything there. I thought, oh, I had a quiet weekend in the city. Well, it turns out it wasn't. And I checked the MyRMT app and nothing was on there. And so it's quite alarming that for whatever reason, that information was not put on the app. And we spent a whole lot of money on that app for us not to be putting all the information in it. What was it, $250,000? So either it was an oversight or if it was censored, a lot of people are thinking that, that it's censored. I know it's embarrassing that we have a lot of uh, in, uh, brand new businesses and things going downtown, especially around our event center. And if things are not going well with crime there, yeah, it's embarrassing. But if we censor these things, then what we're doing is not giving people the full picture. And we can't address these issues if we don't know about it. We're having uh, lots of surveys go out asking the citizens what they think. And if they don't have all the information about crime and what's going on, then all this information and feedback you get is meaningless. It's useless. And so I also am worried about with those fights and shootings that happened, they were right in the parking lot that our new housing project, the housing development, is going in. And it seems like it's the gorgeous, you know, holy grail trifecta of housing. It's got a good, a good price, a good condition, a good location. But that's really a fraud if the location is not as great as we're making it out to be. Because I worry we're putting families in there that they think they're getting a great place, and if someone's coming home from a late night shift, and they're on the weekend and the club is getting out and there's fights and shootings, they could get hurt. If you have shootings going on and a stray bullet goes in with the window and a family's living there, that's dangerous. So I worry about that. And so what I really want to see is the, the my RMT out every single incident being put up in there in a timely manner, all of the information, but nothing being censored. And also, uh, another reason the Telegram didn't know about this is the, uh, the city Rocky Mountain radios for the police traffic is, is scrambled. And so nobody can follow what's going on. It makes it, maybe it's a good reason, but it seems to me that if the fire department doesn't have their radio channel scrambled, and the Nash County Sheriff does it, and the Edgecombe County Sheriff does it, then why do we scramble ours if they can do an effective job of solving crime? 
Thank you. I'd like to invite Dr. Lisa Nelson Robinson to the podium. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members, and City Manager. I did have some great notes, but given what we just heard, I have to change my my, my notes. Um, I am in defense of the city council members being able to speak loudly and passionately about their record and push back on any negative narratives, any misinf misinformation, and tell the truth, truth to power, and not be shut down, not be censored. We saw how that worked out in Tennessee. I am not for people being censored. We need to hear the full story. I'm not for the $30 million judicial center because I think the city needs to take a bigger view about why crime is caused. I think our police would prefer less of a raise if they had less work to do. And so if you get to the root cause of crime and address that for $30 million, I think people would be much more happier. Having said that, I want to push back on the narrative we just heard about our downtown. Because I've lived in this town since 1993, practicing search in a boys' sports clinic. I love this town. I'm from New York City. I can tell you, I went to school at Yale University, and there was more drugs flowing in the dorms at Yale than there ever were on the streets of New Haven, and you never heard about it. And I can guarantee there's more drugs flowing in the streets of Candlewood that you will never hear about. So I don't want the narrative that our downtown is some dangerous place that people have to hide from. Because I've walked downtown any time of night. I have never had any problems. I'm proud of our downtown. I love what the young people are doing there. I love what the business people are doing there. And the narrative that the media and certain parties in this town like to portray about Rocky Mount being dangerous. And that the Rocky Mount Telegram loves to portray is false. False. I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to stand it for it. I'm going to call a lie as I see it. So, yes, things happen. Things happen everywhere. It's just like Nash General. But guess what? Who had the wrong organs transplanted at Duke? Who had their OR instruments washed in elevator fluid at Duke? So people pick and choose what they want to talk about. I want to talk about the positives. I want the city council to focus on solutions together and do not shut down people who speak truth falsely because censorship doesn't work. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite uh, Mumtaz Chai. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, Council members, ladies and gentlemen. At the last city council, a councilman stood up to defend himself and his black colleagues after being accused of dereliction of duty by a member of the public. In the delivery of his defense, he demonstrated confidence, eloquence, clarity of thought, and he spoke the truth. He followed the rules of free speech. His speech was free from vulgarity, obscenity, intent to defame or cause disorder, free from harassment, and free from threats. His voice reached a crescendo when he outlined the assistance the member of public had received from the city councils. Sure, he pounded his fist on the table, but that is allowed in the rules of free speech as long as nobody was harmed. He did all the right things, yet he was singled out for lack of decorum, lack of courtesy. He was accused of yelling and screaming, and his outburst, outburst, was considered rancorous. Why? The message is clear. You are black, you don't count, sit down and shut up and we'll teach you how to behave. This subtler colonialist mentality of power and dominance, aggression and oppression is evident in the curtailment of black voting rights, expansion of the Riot Act, book bans and gerrymandering, etc. with many more to come. Racism, bigotry, and white supremacy have no reverse gear. It's indisputable that the lack of decorum and the lack of courtesy towards the city council and the residents of Rocky Mount were demonstrated when some council members attempted to sneak off to the state legislature to raise millions of dollars for the new judicial center. 
millions of dollars to be placed on our backs as future taxes. Where is your decorum? Where is your courtesy? Do not pontificate from the ivory tower. As for yelling and screaming, rancorous outbursts, isn't that we witnessed repeatedly on TV during illegal traffic stops, illegal home invasions by police officers, yelling and screaming, pulling out innocent drivers from their cars, women dragged out by the hair, exhibiting total lack of de decorum and courtesy for citizens. That is a rancorous outburst. That's real yelling, that's real screaming. Did you see these behaviors in the council member while he made his defense? Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Darlene Spencer Harris to the podium. Good evening. Uh, first, I can speak out about the judicial system. Um, the $30 million that wants to be invested into that, I'm totally against it. I won't go further into that because it has already been addressed by many of my constituents out here. The other thing I wanted to speak out was about the last council meeting when our councilman that was elected by the people felt it was necessary for him to speak out and speak the truth to the public because there has lies have been told. And for our mayor to print an, have an apology and print it in the paper in regards to his behavior, well, his behavior was acceptable in my eyes because he told the truth. We don't need anyone to c correct how we speak or how we feel. It's called freedom of speech. I do not need anybody. My mother is deceased. I don't need any white lady or white man to tell me what I'm able to think and how I should speak. Mr. Andre Knight, I will call him by name, Councilman Knight. He spoke the truth at that last council meeting. And I, I am in his defense totally. And if we don't have unity and we don't have inclusion, none of the goals that are trying to be accomplished will ever be reached. And with that being said, I'm done. I'd like to invite uh, Crystal Anderson to the podium. Good evening. I tell you, I hate double minded people. The last female just left from this podium came here from Florida. I met with her in Tarboro, I live in Pine Top, and she talking about coming together, but I'll talk about that later. 
Uh, public comments. As a black man, I take offense to a white female responding to black men. I talk loud because I want you to hear me and because I say what I mean and mean what I say. I find it interesting that they can attack the council and nobody stop them. But when folks simply clap, they clap for something positive, when the five chiefs spoke, it appears they are out of order. Really? If the media would do like I do and wait for the LEA to put out a time of response, a lot of this mess would be going on. Telegram, um, fighting crime, I look at that mess they put out. Do like I do, wait until a press release come out from the city or the police department, and a lot of this mess wouldn't be going on. But everybody was trying to put it out there first. And then I got a problem with black folk sending mess to fight crime. And she just put anything out there. And, and, and the last thing I want to say, I find it interesting, like certain folk come to this podium talking about what, what, what they're really doing is trying to drive other folk against the council because it's things they want, like buy up people's property. They can't get it, so they get mad. They want everybody to be mad with the council. And the last time I checked, all y'all look been grown. I'm 60 years old. A couple of those brothers right there, they're way younger than I am, old enough to be, be my child. TJ went to school after my daughter. I don't know that much about to take care of. But they are, everybody grown. And those that ain't grown, you need to grow up. Thank you. I'd like to invite Christopher Blackwell to the podium. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Cooper Blackwell, 760 Silent Ray, Apartment L, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, um, Ward, Ward 4. Um, thank you for having us today. Um, it's important, very imperative, that we do protect um, the freedom of speech and that we stand behind um, equity um, and workers' pay, as well as stand behind leaders that are committed to serving our community and that have long-standing evidence of creating solutions that are community-based and community-led that lead to sustainable infrastructure, sustainable systems, and, and improvements for people that have been disenfranchised for centuries. Um, I think today we are witnessing, um, and we are witnessing a moment of transition and the city as the center of it all, as we so claim to be, um, will have to prevail through a struggle. Martin Luther King Jr. has a quote, and he says that change does not roll in on the wheels of inevit inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. So we cannot be afraid of change. We cannot be afraid of conversations that's gonna better us as a community. And when you walked into this room today, you could cut the tension in the air with a butter knife, because the, and the silence speaks loudly. Um, so it's imperative that we are paying attention to what's being said tonight and that the council, you all are being representative of the people and the concerns that the people have um, because the NAACP is here if you don't. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to invite Mr. Troy Davis to the podium, please. Good evening <clears throat> to our city manager, uh, Keith Rogers. That was a very bold point. I had a conversation with the chief. I greatly appreciate that raise because hopefully it will allow us to fill some of those vacancies. To the fire department, we hear you. We with you. And then I also ask that you uh, continue on and try to come up with some quick solutions for our uh, pay raise that has been in the make for many, many years, as well as other things that's been in the work for many, many years. Um, today, I want to speak truth to power. Um, it was said that the city has invested millions of dollars in me, and I want to clarify. First, 
Thank you to the city for investing $900,000 of my mission to create clean, safe, and affordable housing, primarily in Ward 1, when I, where I was raised. Housing has always been a priority for me. I've shown that not by the word of mouth, but by my actions and my dollars. In 2011, while a sophomore at Winston Salem State University, I began rehabbing homes in some of the worst parts of Rocky Mount, when no one else was investing, including the city. Even though housing has always been a priority of this council, for almost a quarter of a century, six years into my development initiatives, the city of Rocky Mount decided to invest in my endeavors. As I started to rebuild my community brick by brick, window by window, and door by door, uh, $300,000 for the Davis Loss, a dilapidated building with pigeons as the only tenants, now provides 22 luxury lofts, a restaurant, a shoe store owned by an NBA player, and a future juice bar and fresh grocery store. $200,000 for Stalingrad, which was a crime infested and over 80% boarded up with trees growing through the porches, now offers 59 rehab units, creating clean, safe, and affordable housing. $100,000 for East Grand Apartments, which all but two units were boarded up with rats and roaches. It is 100% leased, with $825 in rent for two bedroom, one and a half baths, and four units are located for affordable housing. According to the 2023 fair market rate analysis by HUD, two bedrooms in zip code 27801 should be at $890. And as you just heard, the rent for my two bedrooms are way below. And while the rent for the Davis loss range between $945 and $1,500 for luxury loss, we provide three affordable units, some paying as low as $700. So yes, I have received approximately 10% funding from the city to add to over $9 million that I've invested out of my own pocket to do what the city couldn't do, create safe, clean, affordable, and luxury houses and businesses in Edgecombe County. You do the math on the return on investment. Yes, I did raise the rent. I raised the rent on the rats, the roaches, the trees, the pigeons, and crime, because I always have, I, because affordable housing have, and rebuilding Rocky Mountain have always been my priority. Thank you. I'd like to invite Reverend Nehemiah Smith, Jr. to the podium. Good afternoon. When I was 18 years old, Morehouse College, Reverend Dr. Lawrence Abel Carter, who's the dean of the Martin Luther King Interdenominational Chapel, spoke to us one day and said, gentlemen, it's not enough to speak truth to power. You have to speak with power the truth. Truth is, in this current political climate, we are more concerned with wins and losses than solutions. We can't see the good in our community because we conflate gripes and grievances. And yet we have an opportunity to get it right, to right generational wrongs. Instead of griping, let's rally around challenging our legislature to restore our sheriff's authority to issue gun permits. Let's rally behind improving health care outcomes and affordable housing for all, better mental health provisions and food security. Let's support a sound public education system. Um, we must not allow what we are doing now be the cause dia. It must be the cause of vita. Not the cause of the day, but the cause of our lives. Uh, I have been and always will be in support of the fire department here in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I want to say that I appreciate everything that they do. They are a part of uh, our public safety system. Uh, I also appreciate the police department. I understand that we need to recruit uh, other people, but not at the expense of uh, the dignity of our other employees. Let us uh, take another look at this. I'm not saying that we should not bring in new people. I'm not saying that we should not offer the $60,000. But don't do it at the expense of these gentlemen here, these gentlemen, these women, and these men here. Because they mean as much to us as the police, as the trash people, as everyone who works and does a great job for this city. Because it takes more than the police to keep the city safe and clean. It takes a concerted effort by all and so let's be fair to all. Let's be fair to all. You're doing a good job, but sometimes we miss the mark. And like I said, um, don't be concerned about these gripes 
and these, you know, let's look at grievances. And if we're going to look at grievances, let's make sure that we are looking for solutions. And I believe that we have the intellectual currency on this council to get that done, especially with our new uh, city manager. Because truly, I say again, I invite you to church on Sunday at 11, because this is Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. <laughs> Time that perfectly, thank you. I'd like to invite Bronson Williams to the podium. Once again, good afternoon to the mayor and council. Uh, as I was adding up the days, today is day 50 for our city manager. 50 days. This city manager has come in and helped to deal with vacancies in our police department. As we always heard, the situation in which Rome was not built in a day. We understand that this is budget season, so as the weeks unfold and months unfold, perhaps we will hear some of the things in which the city manager and the rest of the city staff is proposing for increases for employees. Just last year, the city council looked at a $4.7 million comp plan for this city. Staff that has been in the city for a long time should know that this city council is about equitable outcomes. Challenging things when department heads did not reflect our community. Challenging things when uh, there were issues with employees. This council has a long history of being equitable. I don't think they're going to stop now. I believe that the work has started by this manager who's come in and looked at bold ideas on how do we fill these vacancies. I get it, education is important. How do we stop crime? First of all, we certainly gotta educate our children. Be responsible parents. But when that fails, we understand what the outcome is for that as well. And must be prepared for those things as we prepare for storms, as we prepare for rain, as we prepare for all of these things, we must be prepared. Sometimes the popular thing may not necessarily uh, be the right thing to do. So you got to make those tough decisions that despite what the popular conversation is about, what is the best thing for our community? How do we push the dial forward a little bit more? And as he said, not get caught up in a lot of these other things and issues. The reality is when it comes to that judicial center, it is the responsibility of this council to be sure that we have adequate space for our judicial center. And if we've outgrown it, it may not be the popular thing, but it may be the necessary thing. We have that as a convenience center. If, if, if this council decides they no longer want to fund it, then I'm sure the residents can go to Nashville or go to Tarboro, but it's not going to stop the citations that go on in that uh, situation, in, in that district court, or, or, or uh, evictions, or whatever else they do uh, with juvenile uh, delinquencies and things that's happening in, in, in the judicial center. Mayor, I thank you for coming on the show last Thursday. We certainly appreciate you. As I always do, I invite all city council members uh, to join us from 7.30 until 9 on WACR-TV now as we talk about things impacting our community where we don't deal with mess. Thank you, sir. <laughs> mm. I invite Mr. Jones to the podium.
At this point in time, we'll open up the, this uh, proceeding to the public, uh, for public comment. Is there anyone here to speak on this matter today? Again, I'll open the podium to uh, speak to this particular item in public hearing. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and I'll look to the council to, uh, for a motion to adopt the resolution to adopt, uh, authorize the finance department and or the city manager to execute any required documents to the finance. So moved, sir. Motion made by Councilman Doctor, seconded by Councilman Joyner. Is there any for discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Councilman Harris. Just a quick note, I want to thank the finance department. This finance rate for 10 years, 120 months, is a very, very good rate for the city. And I want to thank everyone involved in doing their due diligence and getting this rate that will save us money over some of the other rates that were in the proposal. Just wanted to say a big thank you to the finance department. Thank you, Councilman. Anyone else? Any discussion? Councilman Knight? Uh, yes, I'm glad to see the Denton Street pool is on the agenda for financing. Do we know a time when that would be completed? Are you ready to do something? Councilman, I'm happy to follow up specifically with you after the meeting. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. No other business appearing before the City Council tonight. I'm going to turn the meeting on. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just have a question. I understood that um, former Fire Chief Corey Mercer had submitted a request to speak. Do you have that? I think Mr. Jones was in the lobby. Couldn't come up. Just walk in. Just wait for the mayor to recognize. No, no, I trust you. Okay. So, I'm sorry, Captain Mercer, I, I'd be happy to, uh, Chief, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's saying if he wants to speak to the lobby of the public. Yeah, no, we'll open it up for you. Thank you. And Mr. Uh, Jones, I think Mr. Jones is here. Yes. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council Mayor, and Mr. Manager. Um, I would like to first thank you all for your leadership for the city that has been great for so many people for so many years, including myself. Um, I have such a smile. Life is good, especially at retirement. You should try it. Uh, <laughs> last week, I heard a bold announcement of the interlocal police officers that would be paid $60,000 to begin a salary, which also means that every current officer will be paid that as much as well with a new salary. My humble estimation guess is that this would be a minimum of about $800,000 impact to the budget there around. I would like to hear how we will sustain this without any other cuts or tax increase. There is much support for my brothers and sisters in blue, along with Chief Hassel, who's doing a fantastic job. They are very much deserving of this financial increase that may occur. So many concerns are not that no one should not be given an increase, but that the concern is that public safety operates at one, with, as one unit. It moves in unison, just like the left hand and the right hand in boxing. Every shooting, accident, homicide, suicide, murders, and assault they both respond to. The majority of the time, the fire department arrived first with the same dangers. The term bold was moved, used in a press conference, press release, when in fact the disparity between the two salaries is that of being reckless. Now, I didn't call anybody reckless, and I didn't say the decision was reckless. I said the disparity between fire and police is reckless. The city was in the same position 20 years ago with disparity. In the midst of the pay study, just like the one that we are in right now, the salaries for public safety was brought up to parity within 5%. It was identified that each organization were equipped with tools to solve different problems in regard to public safety. In just 50 days, our city has regressed in public safety back to 20 years. We have gone back these 20 years and made the separation of fire and police all over again. This separation in pay, and again, is reckless. A line was drawn in the sand and it appeared that PD was chosen over the fire. During the flood of the century, it was the fire department to save the city. During the potential rise in this plant in the planning phase, the fire department, along with the police department, mitigated one of the most 
peaceful demonstrations in the state during a critical time in our nation. During COVID, fire led to coup plans to ensure the city operations would not be disrupted for almost two years. The fire also manages the emergency, the emergency operation plan for the city and serves as the emergency management. 40 officers now represent 25% of the workforce, which is that challenge. But this is the new norm and must be managed differently. Fire has been operating 25% shortage of workforce for almost five years, but we have implemented uh, work schedules and policies to ensure that we can respond to calls for service. It appears that fire has been overlooked for being innovative and forward thinking when it comes to life safety measures or having a ready workforce. Firefighters are tired and overworked, but they're in a different mindset because we know that lives are at stake if we do not respond to calls. In closing, I'm calling on you to reprogram your mindset to consider public safety as one, not fire and police, and to address the equity in pay. I know the response will be pay said it will be addressed in a new budget. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mr. Jones if you're here. Council, um, Mayor, um, New City Manager, and Council. I'm speaking on behalf of the Environmental Service Sanitation. Um, I'm speaking today because it seems like we're, our, our department has been overlooked. Um, we're not saying that with the 36 percent increase with, with the police department, and it's not warranted, they may deserve that. But what, what about us? We, we have been two years in the making, haven't seen any changes in our department. We might have a few workers here and there, but we're still undermanaged. You know what I'm saying? We don't have the resources we should have. But the pay should reflect what we do. We're a important part of this city. We keep the city going just as much as the fire department and the police department. If this trash doesn't get picked up, or uh, people to look at like look down on our job, but it's an important job. We do we do a lot for this city. And some of the residents, they ask us every day, they appreciate us. But let the city council, mayor, and the new city manager reflect on that. Show us that you care about us. You know, that's, that's all we ask for. You know, we you know we can't get yesterday back, but you keep taking tomorrow from us. We have to show us something. Show us something. And we are, we are, you know, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. And most of my constituents, my, my department, let, let, us, let us be the forefront and some, 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 some show some kind of understanding for us. We went through a COVID situation two years ago. We won a man. Out here working 15, 16 hours a day just to provide something for the city. But let us get our piece of the pie. If you, if you got it, you slice it up, dice it up the right way where we can have ours just as much as anybody else. That's all I have to say on that. And I appreciate it. Take your time. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you. This time I'll entertain a motion to go into closed session. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir, uh, yes, Mayor, and I'd like to thank everyone for coming out and, and the employees. There's been some um, speculation going around in the community that um, employees, city workers, should not come to the council meeting. So I want the, the mayor and the city man manager to assure, according to section 16-142 uh, grievance um, procedure or policy uh, that it would be no retaliation and not saying that it would be but uh, we appreciate hearing the voices of our employees and we appreciate the hard work from the fire department uh, police, sanitation everybody, it takes all of us to make this city run so I just don't want anyone to have any fear
to a city council chamber and to address it in a, um, with decorum, respect of the mayor, the city manager, and this council uh, with, their, uh, with their concern. I think we owe them that. And if the mayor can, if you cannot do it, if the city manager cannot do it, then someone other than me on this council can do it. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak? Councilman Jordan? Certainly. Um, I want to concur that thanks. And I'm pretty sure that the mayor and city manager will speak to those items of how we plan to respond. Um, we value every department, leader, every department in this city because we don't work as individuals, we work as teams, and our response should reflect that. And so I am thankful when I see you out doing working, we are working in this city to make it work for everyone. So I'd just like to thank you for being here. I know that on this beautiful day, there are other things that you could be doing. We want to make sure that we pay you so you can do it. Yes, uh, Councilman TJ Walker. Um, thank you everyone for, for coming out and taking the time. Do we have anyone that can uh, provide us with uh, just a quick answer when the last time we executed and approved our pay plan study in the city of Rackenau? Or does anyone not have that knowledge firsthand? Council, I would like to take the first opportunity because of the conversation this evening to say that I can't remember if it's day 50. I, I haven't been counting like that because I've been enjoying every day of it. But first and foremost, <laughs> I want to say that it's my uh, always my number one goal to make sure that the city of Rocky Mount is a great place to work. And so that extends to every single department. And so what I will not do out of respect for the entire organization is entertain departments versus departments. So what we had recently is an opportunity because of vacancy savings in one department to move forward with a recommendation to ensure that we could fill uh, the significant amount of vacancies from the organization that I have inherited. Uh, additionally, in regards to class and compensation, we know that a class and compensation study is underway. What I've also committed was is this would not continue to be the type of report that sits on the shelf. We would come back with meaningful recommendations and I would do everything within the resources available to us to implement those recommendations for the better of the workforce. So at this juncture tonight, I am not able to speak to the details of that and it's not because of lack of knowledge, it is because of the respect for the workforce. These are our employees and we need to communicate with them effectively, not only just through chain of command, but to not try to litigate all of our various employee issues in a public forum. So what I can say is that I am committed to providing a update regarding the class and compensation study that will have an impact to all of our employees and, and our entire workforce and we will plan to make sure that they feel the value with the recommendations that come out of that study, which will be included in the budget that I propose to council next month. Thank you. And I think that's the appropriate response, is that we have something to respond to from our um, higher, and I don't mean that in a negative way. You have to be hired to be the CEO of Rocky Mountain by the board. Um, I am also um, desiring, I appreciate that, um, that response, that everyone's department will be reviewed with uh, sincerity 
and with um, market market accurate information and that we have a budget that is able to be sustained without unnecessary tax increases and that every member of the city of Rocky Mount team has a right to speak your voice. I'm really pleased today, not because you have taken a stand um, for anything other than saying, please consider me. I heard no disrespect from anyone today, and I appreciate that. Um, the phone calls that we've received, I've received, um, have been interesting and heated. Uh, we have a new manager uh, who is getting his sea legs set. We have budgetary um, competition on projects, personnel, and that, that really buy for the vision of our city. Um, we're going to chop this thing down and up. And when we talked to Manager Rogers, um, we also stated that we've got to figure out how you bring respect into every single corner of the city of Rocky Mountain. It wasn't just about the police department. I want to know what about the clerks? What about the people who answer the phones? What about every single member of this powerful city? I also want to remind us uh, that we as a city council adopted several years ago a vision that had equity and inclusion and key shared prosperity at the very hallmark of everything we do. And we will be evaluated if those are just words on a paper or if it's real. So what I'm hoping is that when we go into budget discussion, we'll see that the city priorities are placed on building up the places that are thin, strengthening that which is already strong, but not playing games people's lives. This is your life. And it's the life of our city. And we're all taking it seriously. And if nobody knew it before, we know it now. So thank you for every member. And sure, I'm sure uh, Manager Rogers, you can you give your people some confidence that they will not be retaliated against for speaking out? Can you give some confidence to them? We don't have an organization that retaliates against people that are exercising their rights. Thank you. I appreciate it. Councilman Harris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Rogers. We're glad you're on the team. We got a lot of challenges ahead of us. I think the people sitting up here are going to work very hard because I personally appreciate each and every employee who works for our great city. Unity sometimes is hard. We have differences of opinion, but we should be united in a common goal. And that common goal is to make Rocky Mount proud and the best that we can do for our citizens and those visiting Rocky Mount. I encourage our uh, citizens and some of our employees, of course, you'll be working. We will have a retreat next week in Durham. I wish it was here. But I hope it's going to be streamed live. I hope you can see how we are going to roll up our sleeves and make sure that what we are going to be doing over the two and a half days in Durham, we will make you proud. We got challenges. A lot of things that we're going to have to look at and how are we going to plan over the next few years? But bottom line, Tom Harris has you. And please do not forget that I support each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Anyone else? With that said, I, I want to also say thank you very much for everything that every employee at City Rock and does. I certainly appreciate the fire department, the police department, the sanitation, uh, and each and every member. I know that we've had a lot of conversation internally over the last week or so 
uh, related to this matter and many others. And I can tell you this, that everybody in this, this council that I have spoken to has expressed a sincere desire to make sure that everybody is treated as um, opportunely and equ equitably as possible. And that's certainly something that is the intent, I know, of this council. I believe that it will be worked out through the budget process. I have all confidence in that. And I'm excited about where we are today. I do appreciate our new manager and the challenges that he's walked in facing. If, and I'll answer the question, if I had line of control within the city of Rocky Mountain, if I were the CEO, then obviously all our policies would be taken care of. I have confidence that our manager and his affirmation that it's on, he will administer the policies fairly, will actually will take place, not actually, will take place. There's not a question in my mind. So I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. I think it's been a good conversation. I uh, appreciate everybody who spoke in com public comments. I appreciate everybody's opinion even those that are directed against me personally or my office. But I will say that, um, you know, it is everyone's right. I do appreciate it. With that, I'd like to entertain a motion to go into closed session. So moved. Second. So Councilman Joyner, is there a second? Okay. TJ Walter okay. Wall made a motion. Second by Harris. Closed session in for the purpose of uh, economic development and personnel. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, lights on. We're now in closed session.